Hello! In this video I will be showing you how to put together the Vardo, which is essentially also called a Gypsy Wagon, which is an SVG file from Simply Crafty SVGs. So this is uh, one of the first ones I put together. The last, the final one before this one. As you can see you can leave the doors open, I mean the windows open or put vellum and we're going to put vellum on this version. So this is what it looks like. It has a little welcome mat in front with a door that opens and with little railings on the side and wheels. And then the lid comes off. In that case it fell off. So you can put a small gift or you can put some tea lights or fairy lights inside to light it up. So that's your little tour around the little Vardo that um, we created. So to start with, we're going to put together a set of wheels. So these are, there are four layers of cardstock on each wheel. I already did three of them. So what I do, I use textured paper, so I'm putting textured paper down. So I flip it over so the inside will have the textured paper look. Doesn't matter if you're not, if you're using another paper, um, just put the good side down on one of them. And then on top, um, because again I'm using textured, I put place the texture up and I lightly place it on there until I can make sure it's aligned and you can use those little openings in the edges to align the layers together. I decided to go with uh, layering cardstock instead of doing it in 3D as uh, it gets for the look I wanted I wanted some thinner tires or wheels I should say. So you can see you just want to do a thin um, layer of glue. I'm using a uh, fine tip applicator with Scotch Quick Dry today. I will sh have a link to the Scotch Quick Dry glue if you've never used it, but it is handy if you use it in a, a fine tip applicator or a like applicator bottle, I should say. So here's the last one. And I'm a kind of a messy gluer, so um, fortunately this glue dries clear, so if I do, you can, sometimes it gives it a little sheen, so you try not to get the glue on the outside, um, so I'm really careful, but if it's around the edges a little bit, it's not as big of a deal for me. Biggest thing is just making sure you take the time to layer them up. And then what I did with the tires, I actually, after I had them layered, um, I go, went around just like you see uh, to apply pressure and then put something heavy on it. But you can see there's some thickness to it now. But putting something heavy on it just to make sure they don't curl or... So I kind of use the cuddle bug. It's like a, a part of the cuddle bug embossing machine. It's just one of the... I forget what it's called, but it's part of the sandwich. But it's kind of heavy enough so I put them underneath that for a little while so that's why we're doing it first and I also inked the edges I actually um, sanded the edges a little bit first so I'll show you and I used a um, I'm not gonna do it yet I used a little nail file that I got at the like the Dollar Tree one of those mini ones I use it all the time to get like little little bits of paper if it doesn't cut clean. I had some trouble with this particular paper color. Um, once in a while you get a batch that's a little bit more fibrous than others. So I was just getting some of those little bits off and then adding a little ink on the edge with my little color box chalk ink. So then I put those aside. We're gonna go ahead and piece together a few things. So here you'll see if you cut out all these pieces there's inside panels that are smaller, so if you want to put the smaller pieces aside, and we'll add the little trim to the larger pieces, and that's on the front and the back. So here's the one with the door. If you line them up, you'll see that one's smaller than the other. That's just for the inside to finish the inside to hide some of the tabs. So to start, we're just going to add the trim on these pieces. 
So I find it's better to add glue to the actual item I'm going to put it on. So if I, you can put it on the actual trim underneath the trim, but I've been known to drop it and uh, ruin the item that I cut below it. So whatever works best for you. I just know not to get any thicker. You just kind of eyeball where you need to have the glue so you don't have it too far away from the edge. And whatever works for you, I usually either start at, the, at a straight part or um, a part that is easy to line up. It should line up perfectly, but if it's a little bit off, like mine was a little bit off, um, it's not a huge deal. I'll just use my handy dandy chalk ink to ink the edges. And I would do that anyways because of the green. The, it's the mint. I'm actually using a mint paper color from uh, American Crafts. So the back's the same. Just add glue around the edge and then line it up carefully. And when, when I'm doing these really thin pieces like this to line it up on the edge, I just kind of lightly place it so I have a little wiggle room to get it in place. And then apply pressure. And then I had little dilly bobs on the side so you had to get those off with my little, like I said, it's like a dollar, I think got it at the dollar store. And I do use the, I like to, I prefer the color box chalk inks to do edges really quick like this. So and you see I use that kind of tool all the time, but that particular bound paper I was using, um, it just was a batch that was really fibrous. So it didn't cut all the way through. I find that happens with black too. So now you don't need to add these vellum windows, but since I intend to use mine as a tea light or to hold little lights inside to light it up inside, I'm doing that. If you didn't, you just omit the step of adding the vellum. I did a version without the vellum windows. But these little vellum panels you want to make sure you're putting on that back part of the cutout, of the window cutout and the door cutout. And they're slightly smaller than the um, outside uh, measures of these windows. I was trying to think of the right word to say. So we have two of those. One thing I always try to keep handy too is uh, when you have glue that leaks on your table to have a little wet paper towel. You'll see that all throughout this video. So the other thing I always say be careful of is putting glue too close to the uh, opening edges so you, you don't want the glue to leak in onto the vellum. I'm notorious for that so I'm not the best probably most patient gluer. I think that would be the right thing to say. And this is the back of the door. So I'm just adding that because that'll be glued on to the actual um, body of the Vardo or Gypsy Wagon, whatever you want to call it. Had to pick a name. And if you wanted to, I did make this in kind of a, a different color, this panel that we're going to put this back panel on this little door trim. So if you wanted to, um, if you felt that it would look better with the darker brown, you just have to go change the colors using your software. Sometimes I have to make design choices that I'm like, oh, well, some people might not like that. But if they didn't, they can always change it. And it should line up to the bottom edge of the door. And so if it doesn't fit that way, you got to go the other way and line it on the bottom edge. You could do a slightly up if you don't want it too far down too. Or you don't have to use it at all really. You could put whatever you want on the door. I was just playing around with shapes when I put that little thing middle part in. Just easier to get all this piecing out of the way in my opinion. And then you can see we already have those windows done for the vellum put in them for the um, bay window. So right now I'm just folding 
carefully on the score lines. So you want to be careful with this. It's a little bit smaller. As it, items get smaller, they get harder to fold. After we fold it, we're going to add those uh, little windows, I mean the trim with the vellum. Um, but you could opt not to fold it first. That's up to you. And those outer um, tabs, and I'll show you, we're going to end up actually putting a valley fold in them. I'm just going to making sure before I fold it, I know where that score line is. And then they're really thin. So you have to be careful around the openings and how you fold it on the score lines. Using a score tool like a, a Cricut score tool might not be deep enough for this. This is where uh, dashed or doing extra like double score lines to make it deeper. But then we're going to go ahead and place these windows into place. Now um, do your best to get it into the space. You could flip them. The best thing I found when it comes to this is flip, flipping it upside down and matching up the openings because you can't see it once the vellum's on. I didn't do that on this one so I had a couple crooked windows. Uh, it doesn't take away from the look too much as long as it's all to not totally askew. But you see from the back you kind of can see the inside edge of that brown trim. That'll be the case no matter what colors, color it is because that opening should match exactly. So if it's off a little bit it can be a bit notice noticeable but once you see it as a whole most of those things aren't noticed. And I ended up kind of just inking the edges to help not hide it. I just think that's a tool of the trade. So again, be careful when you're putting the glue around the, the edge here to put the trim. Because you don't want it leaking onto the vellum. If you were just doing the trim without vellum, uh, it probably would be easier to match up. I know it would be because you could just match it up with the shape in the middle with your fingers and feel through there to get it in place. I know some might want to put uh, curtains or something to that effect. So we just wanted to get that on before we assembled it. So you see I had the middle a little bit askew. Not good. But it's not that bad. So don't worry about that if that happens to you. So now we're going to work on the body. So we have all the pieces here from the body plus the side trim. So we'll add it to the sides just like we did the other panels. And we do have uh, individual panels in the extra stuff folder um, when you unzip the file if you would prefer to use a different paper color as the background here. So it just has a cutout for the window, um, but it allows you to put a different color paper than the body if that was your choice. So we'll go ahead and add glue around the edge of the sides just like we did on the other panels. And the only difference is for these little swirls we'll just dot glue lightly on the back of these little swirls. So be careful because when you, you want to set them down very carefully so you don't want a lot of glue because it may be shown or um, leak out. So just know your glue. If you want to use little dots, that works too. So I start at an edge, either the upper right or bottom edge. Line that up first and carefully place it from there. Again, once you get those swirls down, you don't want to move them, so you want to get it lined up first. And if it's not perfect, again, don't worry about it. I mean, it's, it's sized to be there but it's craft. So do your best and again you can ink the edges if you need to. I have my go-to's are my browns and my black inks to do uh, inking on the edge. Also it adds a little interest sometimes in depth and kind of frame things in. Anyways it's a multi-purpose thing. So here be really careful with the glue because you don't want to get it on the actual outside the door. So if you wanted to put it on the back of the door, you could do so. But again, I have a tendency to drop things with glue. So I am going to glue something like that. But I tend to, uh, anyways, 
drop I have the dropsies. <laughs> so we're gonna line it up, try to line it up as perfectly as you can. If you want to open it while you're doing it to make sure it's not too far over. I did end up getting a little bit of glue on the vellum because I moved it over. So that's that's the side effect of that. I just wanted to get it into place so the door was still open because there's a score line there to fold the door open if you'd like. So I just, after I got it attached, I just kind of gently opened it just to make sure. And I'm just going to ink the edge here. And it does help that I'm using brown paper, so it kind of goes with it. So I don't want to go too far, but I kind of go around enough to where I can see it's visible. But I didn't want to have get the ink on that front piece, even though we're going to put a panel, so I could have. Then we need to add the window. So again, a thin line of glue around. And then center it. And I can't see it, so what I'm going to do, because I can't see where it lines up, see how you can do that? You kind of line it up that way so you can see the inside edge through the vellum. Again, you wouldn't have that problem if you didn't have the vellum. It'd be fun to emboss that vellum too. I just didn't do it. Had too much going on. So now I'm going to just show you how to fold it because I've already had folded it on the scores. So just in case you're wondering how that happened. You want to be gentle but you want to get crisp edges. So we're going to fold all these kind of up. So that's the bottom tab. And the next one is the lower up and vertical section. And we're going backwards on the second one. So you can see that. A valley fold. So it's going to go mountain, valley, mountain fold. So you can see that it fold, uh, forms the shape. There you go. You can see it right here. I'm trying to give, give, so you can see why I folded it that way. And then um, we go ahead and add the panels on this side. It's the same step as the other side. The ed, the actual trim and the window. And there it is. Voila. Magical. Not really. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put these together. So I made the decision to put the tabs on the outside because most people it's going to be easier. Now, and that's why we have the panels on the front and back. However, if you are one that's more advanced, you can go ahead and glue it to the inside and then just the trim to the outside. Now, uh, so we're going to start here. I'm having you glue it to the outside. So you want to add glue underneath here. So I start with the long tab. Doesn't matter which piece. So this is the, the sake of trying to make it easier for everybody. Um, but again, you could glue them to the inside. It just takes a lot more patience to do it and it's not as sturdy because you really have to hold the tabs when you do it on the inside but that's up to you. So this way I just kind of fold it over so I can make sure that I'm lining up that edge to the inside fold of that tab. Now I want to make sure that's good and secure before I go on to the next so once I get it in place really apply pressure I'm going to fold it over and you see that valley fold it kind of folds up it folds in like that we're going to go ahead and glue those tabs on the outside so we're going to add glue to those two little tabs so we'll end up doing this on both sides So we're going to fold, wherever that valley fold is, we're going to fold in and make sure it meets in that corner before you start setting a tab. So I started with that top tab. So, so you can start with either one. And once you kind of have it in place, you see it popped up a little bit. 
then I held the other one. So I knew I was in the right place. But you can see that the edge is right there. You want it to meet in that corner. So because I'm putting a panel, I kind of pulled it up to make sure because I didn't quite have my edge there in the inside tab fold. With my glue, I have to do it rather quickly, so it really depends on the glue you're using. And to be honest, I have to do that all the time because that's just me. Not everybody's perfect. So here's my thing. You, after we put everything on, we're going to put this over to hide the tabs. But again, if you were more advanced and you want to glue all those tabs to the inside, you wouldn't have had to use that large panel. You could just add the trim. So I know I didn't mention that earlier, but I don't want to confuse a whole lot of people either. So we're going to do the same on the other side. And I'm not speeding this up too much because I want you to see the repetitive. Kind of placing that that fold in the corner, make sure it meets it, and that those edges are meeting the inside tab fold. Getting one in place, and I'm just showing you what it looks like on the inside, and then folding the next over. So you don't see anything on the inside really, a little bit, but not much. Not yet. When you put the bay window in, you'll have a bunch of tabs there. So for this one, again, we're putting glue underneath. It's going to look weird because I made a mistake. It's a little shiny. So mine's not because I put glue on. By habit, I glue usually to the inside. Uh, so I had to wipe it off and glue to the outside. So you just have to make sure you're in place, and then once you have it in place, you can flip it over and apply pressure like that. And then we can glue those little tabs. So this nice, it's always good when they have like a nice crisp fold on them. So this is all repetitive. Again, we're going to cover those tabs that you can see with the panels. And if you get a little too bulky with your tabs on the front, your panels probably won't lay that flat. So that happened on the front for um, me because I accidentally added glue to the wrong side of my tab, but it did cover it. So just know that what we call mistakes, quote unquote, it's just part of the process. That's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. We get that we're just getting those last two and then we'll add the bottom piece. So to make it easy to add the bottom piece, we're just going to fold those bottom tabs inward and then I'm going to pull I'm pulling them out a little bit. Because what we're going to do is just insert it to glue it onto the tabs. So it's just going to sit in there, but we're going to add the glue first, but I want to show you how show you how it would go in. And my tip to you is when you put it in that you put the edge where the door opening is in first, just cuz it's the flimsiest there. But we're going to add glue to all these tabs so they're facing inward. So we're going to add we're adding glue on the inside of those tabs. And then we'll slide in that bottom panel. You're not going to see it, so make sure the texture side is up if you're using textured paper like I am. And the bottom is going to be glued to the base, so it doesn't uh, matter. You won't be able to see those tabs. So I just apply pressure. You could use a tool to do it, but just go along the tabs with my fingertips. Make sure it's good and secure. And you can see that's what it looks like on the outside. So if you had to take a little extra time, I'd do so. Just to make sure it's all together.
Now we're going to put together, assemble the bay window so we can attach it to the body here, there. So we're going to go ahead and add glue to these top tabs. I had to wipe off my tip here. I'm just going to, now that it's all folded and everything, we're it's going slowly, so I'm just holding my um, wet paper towel because I put too much glue and it was leaking through. So just trying to catch it and wipe it up. So there's the top. So we'll go ahead and attach the bottom tabs to the inside. But we're going to do a little inking first. The only reason I did that is because I had a my window is a little bit crooked or my trim so I'm just adding glue to these the top tabs and we'll glue them to the inside and they're small enough uh, they're smaller than the trim so they won't show through And you see how it goes together. We'll just glue those bottom side tabs on the inside just like we did. But here I'm folding these back to make a valley fold. These are all the tabs that will be glued that allow us to glue this to the, the actual body. In that opening on the, the body. So I wanted to get those nice and folded before I finish gluing so I don't pull and put any additional stress on it. That was the reason why I did that at that point. But you could have done that earlier too. So it's just easy to reach in and apply pressure on those tabs. And just make sure you line up those edges to the tab fold there on the sides. It's easy to kind of line them up with your fingertips. I'm just making sure everything's secure before we go on to adding this. So we had to push these tabs in first so they fit through. Suppose you could go from the inside and push it out. That's the other option too. So I'm going to attach that bottom tab first. So I'm just kind of angling it down, placing it in. I'm going to place, I don't know, I look a little bit, uh, I know it looks awkward, but a lot of it's just because I'm trying to get the right angle so I you don't lose the video. So I placed it right in the middle and you need to make sure you're centered so the right and left it will fit just fine. And then I lined up that bottom edge to the inside tab fold. And I'm just making sure that's good and secure before I go on to the next step. Because anchoring one tab does help. Just be careful how much glue you put on it. Um, it. Mostly it will be hidden anyways, even if it leaked through. If you have the tabs on the outside, you're going to have another uh, panel on the outside. So for some reason your glue, as you were gluing these tabs, leaked through to the this outside wall. Uh, we could hide it with the, the other panel. So I'm gluing those on the inside, you can see. Folding those three up and then the last two to the sides. And earlier I showed you uh, the smaller panels. Those are to, they're optionally to put inside if you want to hide these tabs. That's up to you. I added them as a, a SVG file. Um, some people, if you're going to go to all this trouble, most people are going to do it. Because it just depends how you're going to use it, and if you're going to give it as a gift, or put something in it. Because it is strong enough not to hold a really heavy gift, but it could hold some candy or nuts or something like that. It would be a fun little gift. I think this would actually make a good Christmas uh, design. It would be fun to do in Christmas papers. And since I have like the side panels that are optional, 
the other end the extra stuff folder you could actually use pattern paper on every panel if you wanted it'd be fun it would just be different maybe have a little wreath so there's that that uh, the panels that go inside I'm not going to show you how to put them on right now or it really just glue it on there's no no how to I will put place them but I won't be videotaping that we have valuable time I want to show you the hard stuff or the harder stuff so this is not hard but you just want we're just going to slide it over and glue it on so when you're gluing things like this where there's tabs sticking out on the top and edges can be seen it's the right size but you really need to put a lot of pressure so it's kind of hard on this one because you can't flatten it against anything because you've got a bay window sticking out so you're really going to have to use your hands on this one and go around the edges all the to make sure that everything is as tight as it can be so I would work on the edges first and then I would gently rub the front of it first before the glue dries but I mean you want to do the whole thing before the glue dries but I usually match it up at the bottom kind of feel if you see how my thumbs are they're matching it up on the top make sure that it's lined up on the top because you don't want it jutting at the top too because you don't want that to affect your lid and then I'm going to go around and just apply pressure in all the areas. The places where it'll lift the most will be on the edges. So if you want to focus on the edges first, and just take your time. I mean, I, I didn't show the entire time that I took, but the same thing for the front. I didn't show the entire time, but it took longer than what you see. And then making sure you have a little wet paper towel or something just in case you have glue leakage but I'd say those two kind of patience because you're working with bulky items so I just want to make sure you see so that's what I was doing I was making sure that we were lined up and then that one you can flip on to a table and apply pressure but you want to make sure it's in the right place so that could be a frustrating part of the build and you can probably see I went around and inked I got a little ink on the sides but that's okay because those are going to be covered by pattern paper but I like inking all my edges so I did that and we're going to add this little roof onto the bay window so we'll just add glue to the top of that bay window and then make sure that you fold the roof on the score lines I'm just putting that lid aside there and then we'll go ahead and place it on top matching the score lines as best you can if you have a thinner paper it might be a little bit off but basically you just center it and it has a slight edge around the front the right and left side. And we'll put that aside and we'll move on to the base. We're going to move on to the base and the stairs. So we're going to go ahead carefully and fold these sides. They're very long so you kind of want to get it started and then put a great good crease in and then we'll fold in these side tabs and the sides itself and that other little piece is a support so it just folds on the side so it's already folded on the left there so it's really easy to put this together we're going to add glue to the tabs and glue them onto the inside of the smaller edges and we're going to line up the edge of the sides to the tab fold for the long sides and make sure you um, go ahead and get a good fold on those long sides too. You see how it's kind of bowing out? Part of it's because I didn't really get a great crease. So you want to make sure you have a good one. But when you put that base support in, that base support is it's going to help with stability. That's the whole reason I have it is only for strength. Without it, um, when it sat, the tires kind of buckled a little bit where I placed them um, but with this extra support it helps strengthen it so it sits well on those not tires I should say it's wheels tires wheels they're wheels so you can see the holes for the wheels there 
and that's the back part the longest part without the holes that's the front so actually you want to place it in there it doesn't matter which way you put it really but if you put the longer side or not the longer side the side that's closer to the edge there but it really doesn't matter I put it in both ways it works I just didn't want it to interfere with the stairs so I didn't make it much longer so it's really intended to only help support um, the wheels in the back so they don't kind of buckle so we want to add glue to the bottom and the sides like that you want to be really careful to angle it in and then don't apply pressure until you have it right in place so you want to get it so the holes line up if for some reason it kind of goes a little bit higher around the edge I made it smaller but it's a real fine fit so because it's the same color as the base even if it's off a little bit just make sure the holes match for the most part okay because you want to be able to get through that if you use a brad but even um, if it's off a little bit and you can't even tell I have a little bit of an edge on one side um, it it will fit so dry fit it first so you get the feel so don't put glue on it put it in first so you can match it up and then glue it in so now we have the stairs so first I wanted to show you how to fold it so we're just folding those side pieces in the bottoms tabs and then these side stair tabs this is a little fast so it's, this is not my normal speed and then we're just going to start folding it so I'm just mountain folding it first a little bit before I do the valley folds you can see I do the mountain fold so starting at this top here that's the flat part and then it's going to go down and we're going to have a valley fold and then skip one and do another valley fold so get the creases well so you can see that this is the stairs I'm just trying to fold them so you can see it make sure you have good creases in all the folds and there's the stairs right there so it's fairly simple we're just going to go ahead and glue these side tabs as we go down on the to form the stairs so we'll just do one side at a time and you can put a glue on as many uh, tabs as you want to do this at a time if you want to do majority of them you can put glue on the majority of them but you just want to match up that inside those edges to the inside tab fold like we did on the body so I only did two there and we're gonna have panels on the outside so if the glue leaks a little bit it's not a huge deal and some of the reasons for the the panels anyways is the focus to make sure that it can hold the uh, the rails it's going to be the rails that was my dog keeping me keep me company while I'm doing this she's just sitting here she's telling me she wants something so I guess I may have to stop who knows uh, off my dog saga sagas so you can see that I just folded it down you really don't need me to talk through this I'm sure um, but the biggest thing is just making sure that those edges on the side match up to the inside tab folds and that you get that valley fold into the corner there like that the first time I did the stairs it was harder but um, once you get the rhythm down it's really easy then we'll get this last one this last little tab and then we'll end up uh, gluing on the bottom piece so just by adding glued all three tabs kind of make sure the tabs are still up a little bit because you need a little pressure against them if you push them in too much you're not going to get the they're not going to adhere so we're going to just 
fold them in and then gently press it down line it up to the edges when I have it lined up I just kind of gently rub the the tab edges and once it's in place you can go ahead and just rub it against the table and make sure that it it stays and it's not popping back up on you so there are the stairs so we're going to go ahead and uh, layer these pieces so I have them I'm press putting them all textured side up they're double sided so actually those top pieces are swapped so you'll see in a minute here that's how we're going to do it so the inside railing will be textured and the outside will be textured and it gives it a little strength too so so in fact if you wanted to do a different color railing then the brown let's say you wanted the stairs to be like a wood but you wanted the railing to be white you could actually cut an extra piece of each of those these panels I just put on and just put it back to back on either side of this and it, it would actually also strengthen it even more because it would be the third level I was going to do 3d uh, rails but it would have been very intricate and it was quite difficult I would do it on a one-off project but not for one that I'm teaching people to do it, it posed to be it, it was a challenge so I didn't need that glue there I mean it wouldn't hurt anything because I'm gonna glue it to the side of the stairs anyways and you just kind of match it up like I do with everything else you just want to make sure it's in place and kind of jiggled around make sure it's in the right place before you apply pressure so those pieces are ready to go so now we're gonna put the pieces together so we're gonna take the base you want the the back of the um, the Vardo is the bay window so we're gonna line up that back edge to the back edge of the base and remember the longest part without the wheels holes is the front so that's what it should look like just gonna go ahead and add glue to this the bottom of the body so we're gonna line it up again before we get there because I add the glue we're gonna line up that back edge to the back edge of the base and that's where where the holes for the wheels would be So you can do it like this, but it's going to kind of wobble a little bit. So you can have to look from other angles. I can't show you with the camera, but what I'm doing with my thumbs, I was lining it up on the sides and lining it up in the back. It might take a second to do it, so take the time, make sure it's lined up on the side so I can feel with my fingertips that it's lined up. So you see it's going to skew there. I just want to make sure it is in place before I started applying more pressure so I can gently rub here and then I can actually put my hands inside and apply pressure that way but I just wanted to make sure it was in place before I did that now we can add the side panels so it covers up that side green uh, that I actually added ink to by accident. You want to line that up to the holes. So I just dry fit it just so you can see how it goes. It's the same um, way either way. So um, it's equidistance from either side for that particular panel. And when you add glue to the green portion, you don't have to go all the way up. The biggest thing is to line up the holes. 
if there's a minor gap because you have a big gap when you put together the base and the um, the body um, it's not a big deal because you really won't see it too much you might see a little line of paper but it should match it pretty well that's why we concentrated on putting that base on nice and tight around the edges if we can And then you could add that back panel before we put together the base, but I didn't. So, but it's just simple enough to add it now. So instead of putting like a bumper or something, because, you know, this is kind of a hybrid between a, like a gypsy wagon and uh, like Bardo's and it's just my own creation with wheels. And I know they make them on tire, like little uh, tiny houses too, like this. So it's just my imagination with the hybrid of things that I've seen out there, how I came to this. So it's really, it can be anything I wanted it to be, I guess. So again, we're going to put the other side on. And it just pulls it together. What would have been fun too is uh, changing this to a, like a solid, solid paper um, color cardstock and embossing it. That would be a fun way to decorate this if you didn't have pattern paper. And of course, I love embossing folders, so if I get a chance to use one, um, I'm going to. I try to incorporate one in every project, but it's not always possible. But I found this. I wanted to do mint color, but I had to look for a pattern paper I had, so I found this multicolored pattern paper which allowed me to pull a couple different colors in so this the stairs I'm kind of going back and forth here it's gonna fit in the front but it it's not as high the stairs are not as high as the depth of that so what that means we're just gonna glue it to the front but the reason I did that is so if you didn't want the stairs or you wanted to put them in front you could because they'll match up in the front height wise um, we do have optional panels for the sides of the um, stairs and uh, the front edge of the decks if you wanted to put the stairs outward like that. I just wanted to give you options. So, but first, before we attach the stairs or glue on the stairs, we're going to add the wheels. So I used a brad, so you can see I used a smaller brad on that one. But you could, it's just helpful to kind of slide them through. You could glue it on if you wanted to. That's up to you. But that's what the hole's for. So they'll turn. But we want to kind of hide the, the brad. I don't even know what those are called. The brad arms. I don't know the flaps. Um, but I kind of push them down so that it can't be seen from the bottom. And they can roll. And that's just kind of fun. It's not that functional, but... If you had the, if you didn't have the uh, stairs attached, it would be more functional. But that's an option, so always an option. So once we get these wheels on, it just makes it a little bit taller, and it'll help us uh, glue on that the stairs. So again, the stairs aren't as high as the inside of that base so we're just going to glue on the front piece flat to the front of the top step now I could have made it higher but I wanted it to be have the ability so if you didn't want to use the step you didn't have to so you see I'm just adding glue on the front of the step and on the back so initially I was going to put the step out but then I got a night somebody that said it would be a good idea to do it a little bit different person I live with and I agree but I also want it to be multifunction so you kind of want to do it as flat as possible so I'm kind of flattening it and I'm going to put it down so I know have it in the right place and so you can't rub it on the top you're only rubbing it on where the front of the first step and the sides there So and that's why it's handy to have the wheels, uh, the wheels on. 
and see they're attached now so again you don't need to put them on that way you could put it on the front if you wanted to or really not at all it's up to you because that back panel is the same size so you could do another back panel to make a front panel for a deck if you just want to do the deck so now we have these big stair pieces panels now it, if it's if your stairs are a little bit skewed it might not fit right but you want to get that left edge all the way to the edge as far as you can go where this the actual rail hits the the front of the body and you can match it up you want to match it up on the side so we're going to add glue on the side you know the one thing is I've done a couple of these and um, one time it was spot on one time this time it was a little bit off but like slightly off because it's the same color you're not going to notice and I'm going to put another panel on top so the biggest thing is trying to match up that bottom panel piece to the side of the stairs and you might be able to see or not see that the back of the stairs are slightly out but this is all because the way you glue things and how you place them and um, if it's a little bit off it's going to do that but I'm telling you that because if you freak out about it it's not a big deal and then here I have an embossed panel that I'm going to put on top and it just hides everything so here's another opportunity for me to emboss of course I've embossed the um, roof and then we're just going to line it up the biggest thing you want to line it up to is the top and the front of the stairs when you're putting it on because on the back who cares if it's a little bit like you said I can see the little bit of the back of the stairs but um, these things are rough anyways that's the fun part about these uh, bardos so the same on the other side So we're just going to line it up, making sure that the cuts, the edges on the top and the front of the steps, the best you can to get them on there. If for some reason it juts a little bit beyond the front step, that's okay too. Just try to get it lined up on the top. Just a little gap can throw something off like this. When we design these things, we try to hide everything or not hide, give you panels to be able to adjust. But, um, you know, things move. We're not perfect. Crafting, not perfect. It's fun. It's supposed to be rough. So now, after that, we're going to put together the welcome mat. So if you cut it out, there is a layered version that you can print and cut in the extra stuff folder. But if you want to cut it out like this, this is the way you layer it, layer it. So this is the default welcome mat in the file. Again, there's another one that is layered better for a print and cut. Or maybe vinyl. It's, I haven't cut it, but you can try that. The welcome's one piece and the mat's one piece. So you want to line it up. It should fit exactly on the back piece. Mine was a little skew, but you want to make sure that the holes for the E, the O, the L, and the E in the welcome are all in the right place. So you can see that we that's we use the brown to cut those holes. And then this goes on the back, and it's slightly smaller, so it won't go out the edge. We made the second layer exact size, so you could match up the holes better, easier. Let me go ahead and just easier for me to put it on that way to go with gravity. And there's a welcome mat. And I just added a double sided foam tape on it and placed it on the top portion of that little deck in front of the door. So now we're going to move on to the, the roof, uh, which is the lid. So it, it can open uh, to put a gift in there. So we're going to take the pieces that we're not going to use right wet now. That's the first panel, large panel. And these are the others. So we're going to move that and we're going to work on this. I can't kind of call it the top.
top top of the roof which roof it's like a little view area so we're gonna fold it and I just wanted to show you how to fold it just to make sure so we want to make sure you can always fold it later but I think it's always easier to fold it first because we're gonna add the vellum panels to put inside again those are optional any of these windows if you want to just keep them open um, or you could also put acetate as well to make it more like a window so like I said earlier I wanted to use it for uh, to put a glow in it of a, a tea light or I think I'm going to use fairy lights to put in so you want to carefully fold it on the score lines and so I'm just going around feeling them making sure that I get it nice and folded and then we'll kind of flatten it out again and add the vellum pieces on the inside. You see this is how it's going to go together. And then once we have the roof together we'll attach that. So now we're flipping back these side tabs here and that's because we're going to glue it on the inside just like we did the bay window to the body. And these little tabs as well. And those are the only ones that are, need to be valley folds. So we're just getting it trained so we'll be ready when we, we get to that point. Now we're just going to go ahead and place the vellum in just like we've done with all the other vellum pieces. Just be careful not to get glued too close to the openings because you don't want it uh, to be seen or leaking or smudging. And those pieces are slightly smaller than the the areas so you can easily fit them in but just make sure they're in so I'm kind of folding it in to make sure it's a small piece so you just want to make sure that you're you're not overlapping a fold else will be whole, harder to to assemble then we just jumped ahead and put the rest of the vellum panels in so if you need to stop that I would stop here but they all fit in like this and then now we're going to assemble this top roof portion. So we're going to add glue to these little side tabs. And you can do as many as you like. I mean, I'll do all of them on the next one, but you're just wanting to line up those edges with the tab fold on the side there. So just go on each section. So as they're scored and folded, we're just lining each edge open up. And then we'll just get this last tab. I didn't add glue on these last two tabs. So that this next tab is still curved and then the next tab will be vertical. So you just want to make sure that those edges are matching up to the tab folds, the adjacent sides. And then we'll do the same on the other side. So once we get this assembled, we're not going to put the roof on yet, but you could put it on um, if you wanted to. I tend not to do that, um, especially with metallic paper. I am going to carefully put place it on later, um, but you could if you felt like it would be easier to do now. Um, the issue is for me is that um, metallic paper you can get glue on it very easily and it's hard to get off for me at least so um, instead of taking that chance I'm gonna do it last so we have that one last tab on the side here and the nice thing is that we'll put this aside because we want to make sure it's good and dry so when we attach it to the roof it doesn't come apart obviously so we're going to get this last tab and then we're going to put it aside when we put together the main structure of the roof. My The roof lid, I should say. So that's it. So now we're going to get the pieces here. The pieces we want are these. So it's the one with the scores in it 
and there's holes in there and there's these four pieces so two of them have a circular area around it that signifies the front or where the door is and the other two have kind of a some hexagonal type of uh, shape in them which represents the back so that's a fr that's a front and the one on the bottom so the ones we're taking or using right now are the ones without the tabs so one set have tabs one don't so you'll see that's a hexagon right there that shape on the other side is a circle so the hexagon indicates the back and the circle indicates the front and we'll use that to guide how we're going to put the roof together so first we want to go ahead and get some crisp folds in the score lines so you want to carefully fold it and if you uh, you just want to be know where they are if you need to use a tool like a bone folder you can um, the way that my the machine I'm currently using uh, scores is not I'm not using a Cricut right now I'm using a, a Sizzix Eclipse 2 which kind of lightly cuts the score line so it's easy for me to fold others might have to struggle but if you cut the dash line um, it's pretty easy to fold so I've used uh, dashed cut lines for your score lines on your machine that's pretty um, it makes it much easier so we're gonna go ahead and get those nice and folded same on the other side and then we'll start to put those side pieces on the biggest things pay attention to where the circle and the hexagon are So that, that's a hexagon, so we're going to use the piece that's not rounded. So we're going to use that this piece. I would place the textured size side to the inside when we do this. So we want to, we're going to go this way right here. I'm just turning it around and dropping it. So the non-textured side is what we're going to glue to the tab because it'll glue better and we're going to cover it anyway so you won't see it. So we're going to add glue to one tab, one end tab first. And here you're seeing how I was going to go like that. I'm going to make sure that that edge lines up to the inside fold and that it lines up on top and bottom as well because it's the most essential glue anchoring it is the most important part is to so you can get it in the right place so you'll see it'll wrap around like that so I'm kind of folding it back so I can get to the tabs and you can just do we're gonna do all the tabs but you could just do half of them and the next step I'll just do half it depends how easy it is for you. You might want to start with half of them. But I'm going to flip them down a little bit. If you've ever seen me do some of the box similar to how we did the inside of the body, we're trying to do that but in a round piece. But we're not going to do that. We're going to just do it with our fingers right now and match it up. What You want to go tab per tab and the biggest thing is making sure you push it in, make sure that that edge of that um, round or not rounded the hexagon piece is lining up with each section and it's lining up into the inside tab fold so I'm just going around and applying pressure to each tab as I go around and making sure so that last one I had to pull apart really quick and then I'm gonna apply pressure and then um, we'll put the other piece with the tab on it afterwards so I didn't put enough glue on these tabs or dried up because the scotch quick dry does actually dry quickly so just applying additional pressure there and then we'll do the other side the same thing so the biggest thing is making sure the circular part is on the circle side so that little arc 
I could have made the both sides the same, but we really need to differentiate between the front and back because of how the roof goes on. So I determined that was the way I wanted to do it. So we're doing the same thing. We're anchoring that first tab. I know you can't see it because it's kind of curled. But I'm doing the same exact thing. I'm anchoring it to the first tab. And this time I'm only going to do put glue on half of them because it dried up on me before I got to the end. Not all glue is created equal. So I'm kind of pushing it up at the same time. It's better if they kind of flipped up. You're going to press them down. And so you could do it with your fingers one by one, or you could do it a different method, which is kind of get them down here. I know it's kind of hard to do. It's, it depends what's easier for you. And you start at the left, and then just go tab by tab by applying pressure to the table. But the biggest thing is making sure as you go around that you're getting that edge into the inside tab fold. So it lines aligns well. Because if it gets all skewed, it's not going to fit. So we'll just go ahead and kind of move it around. So pull these tabs up so we can glue, put glue on the rest of the tabs. One thing I will hazard you to doing is gluing that end tab first before you glue the rest because sometimes it gets off just a little bit and then it buckles the paper so it's best to do it in order because it's better to have it being longer at one end than it is to have it buckle in the middle so I've done both many times and I find that it's just better for some reason if it doesn't line up right I'd rather it be just not quite right on one side so I'm just applying pressure against the table, doing one tab at a time. Just go around. So I'm just making sure that they're glued down so we can go to the next step. So still with the same thing, we want to get the same shape. So the one with the tabs, we're just going to glue on to that side and it'll cover all the the tabs so you just want to kind of place glue on it around the edges and then line it up to attach it and when you're lining it up you can go ahead and use your fingers to go around the edges to make sure it's lined up in each section you want to make sure also that those tab where it folds the tabs are beyond the end and then you can go ahead and flip it over and apply pressure to attach it. And don't go on to the next one until that one is good and secure. So now you can see that's on and we'll go ahead and add the other side. Just want to make sure that panel's on good and uh, tied around the edges because you just don't want it uh, pulling apart when you lift it. What's nice is that roof part that we attach is kind of like a handle. You can kind of lift it by then. So I just feel around the edges on the inside edges and then on the, the top. Of course it I dropped it there for a second there. And I, w I like to do it a little light before I really apply pressure to make sure it's in the right place. So that's the reason for it coming apart there. And now once I have that on well, we can go on to the next step, which is attaching that top roof piece. So you see those tabs at the bottom there? We'll add strips in a moment, but it'll be easier to do this before we add those. They're they're just for strengthening and straightening that the lid. 
So we're going to go ahead and make sure that your tabs are in and then you can go ahead and slide it in. And then I'm just going to add the glue to the tabs from the inside. So we want to start on one side first. You could do the long side, but just start on one side. So I'm, we're doing the little tabs first. Make sure it's good and center before you do it. Then we're going to fold them over into the little section area. But what, what is nice is that those tabs will fit into their sections on the bottom. And you can see that. And then I like to do the opposite side first after that rather than do the sides. So if you start with the sides, do the other side. Um, if you start with the little tabs, do the other little tabs across and then it will pretty much center it for you. I think the little tabs are going to be the easiest because you have the little sections that you can put them in. So if you did the side first, it's possible you could glue it too far down if you weren't paying attention to that top edge sitting in the tab fold. Um, I did that the first time. So um, it's up to you. I mean, obviously, I'm just telling you what's worked for me and what hasn't worked. And we just want to make sure that we don't get glue on the sides, on the outsides. If we get glue on the inside, um, we have a little thing we're going to, a little panel we're going to cover the tabs and those holes, those guide holes. So we get this last tab down. And it'll secure that top piece. I don't even know what they're called. I guess I should have looked it up before I did this. Um, I just know they're kind of cool. They're like a, it's like a view space. Light. Maybe it's like a skylight. I'm not quite sure. So you can see I'm just kind of rubbing on the top too to apply that pressure. So now it's attached. We're going to get the top roof piece. And then here I'm just zooming in to show you there's a hexagon there. So I know that was fast. So I'm rotating it to match the hex hexagon cutout to the hexagon cutout on that uh, piece we just built. So we want to line up those openings, but just make sure the hexagon matches up with the hexagon and the circle lines up to the circle. So now that we have it the right way, and the reason is the overhang. The overhang in the back is not as long as the overhang in the front. And this also helps center it. Even though I have that roof piece there, it'll help you get it in the right place. So I'm adding glue on the other side, you just can't see it. So just in those little two sections around the cutouts. Again, verify that you have the shapes lined up. And then once you have them lined up, we're just going to going to apply pressure to the places to glue it there. So we want to get it good and secure before we glue the sides. So we're anchoring it with these middle sections. So you can see all the way through. And then we'll glue down the sides. So you see how they're going to just fold down, but we don't want to have the scores in it. So I want it to be have a rounded look. So we'll just add glue. So you just want to make sure you don't get glue on that side, the side that goes down into the uh, Vardo body. So we're just adding glue and I'm going to show you it's going to rotate right now and after this I'll show you exactly where I placed it up to that fold. So we kind of want to go from the top and work our way down. So placing your hands inside for pressure creating pressure on both sides and gently starting from the middle and work to the side. And when we get to that side part, we can go ahead and place it on the table to apply pressure to that panel. But make sure you already apply pressure to the other pieces first. 
So I'm showing you where you can do that. Just be careful with that one side piece. Don't try to bend that or push that against the table. Had some glue on the table. It was dried glue, but got on it. Fortunately, we're covering the top, so. Then we'll do the same on the other side. Here you just want to be patient and just start from the middle again on that top panel and just gently roll it down down to the bottom one and once you get that middle panel set you can go ahead and apply pressure on that last piece at the bottom there. And I was just making sure that you get pressure around the edges because you wanted to adhere. So now we'll add the panel to hide the holes in the tab on the inside to clean it up. So that's just going to fit like that. So we'll go ahead and then glue that in. So I started by uh, holding it, but it's just better if you for me to put it down. You just want to be careful when you place it in that you don't get any glue on the sides as you're placing it in. So I just kind of angled it in. And then just lined it up the hole in that panel. Lined it up to the the opening, the roof opening. And you'll see it kind of hides. We want to hide those tabs and those two guide holes. I didn't go to the edge. The sole purpose is just to clean it up. And then you need to just kind of apply pressure from the top and the bottom at the same time because it's, we're trying to put a curved piece of paper on one with scores. I mean, it, it works. That's why we do it. And that cleans up the inside. And then next we'll add those long edge pieces. So we're going to cover that, so if you have any glue showing through, then that'll be covered. So the sole purpose of these are is just to strengthen the edges of the roof, or lid, I should say. So it straightens it. Otherwise, um, without it, it just kind of bowed out a little bit more. So we're going to line that end of this long piece to the tab fold on the side piece. And then we'll just glue it onto this long piece in the opposite tab. Forgot to add glue to this, this tab, so you do it all at once. and then just line it up and then apply pressure on the bottom and then you can do the same thing on the other side and then next we'll go to adding the roof we're almost done So we're just going to jump ahead um, since I already showed you that one side, but there's the second side. And then we're almost done. We just need to add that top roof piece. So I just want to make sure that's good and secure so it stays. It did really strengthen it when I added that piece. And now we'll have two half pieces for the roof and I embossed them prior to um, prior to this and I actually if you wondered how I embossed it I used small embossing folders but you see there's a little indentation in between so that's where they overlap so I put it in one side and then put it in the other side so these will only go on a certain way as you can see each side specific if you curl it a little bit before you put it on it'll help 
Unfortunately, um, mine kind of naturally curved when I embossed it, but you can kind of curl it a little bit to help you. But we're going to line it up so the edge edges match up, so everything should match up. We'll just have a seam in the middle, which we'll cover with some trim. And I used a wood, like a wood trim, but you could always use a, a different, if you wanted to match it to the roof, you could always change the color on that. So there's two ways I guess you can put it on. You can put it on by just putting glue on the entire thing, but you just want to match it up to the side of that top roof piece. And then you want to line it up to the bottom edge. So you just want to make sure it's in place so when it rolls down it lines up with the edge of that larger that roof piece that we initially put on. So this way I started the middle and went down. Um, but the next piece I'll just do it all at once. And then we'll just go ahead and add the second piece making sure that the edges are aligned to that bottom piece. You can still have you can have a gap in that middle because we had some trim that we're going to add there. So just go ahead and give it a good rub rub to make sure that it's applied well and doesn't flip up on you and you could also apply pressure from within. Now I'm not going to show you the process of putting the trim on. I actually had a video failure in a way but it's not a big deal. Um, I'm going to show you shortly what it looks like and also putting the roof on the top it's just centering the roof. So these little trim pieces are going to go right here and they see the long piece on this side and the short piece on this side and then what you want to do with that top thing, um, roof is just center it. So you just kind of have to eyeball it to center it. So I just added glue to the top and then put the actual roof on top of that. And there we go. This is the full Vardo with the roof on and everything. So you can see the long overhang should be in the front and the shorter in the back. I had some fun making this one. A little bit of imagination and actually a lot of fun and a bit of frustration too, but it was all worth it. And I hope you enjoy this project as well. Thank you so much for watching.